Welcome to Voodoo Whiskey Gaming, and this is my late review of the Diablo 4 beta. And yes, like so many people, I got a fun time staring at this screen first. But once I did get into it, the part that I experienced, the story focuses predominantly around Lilith, who was one of the founders of Sanctuary, and she is back, and that's a bad thing. The story did feel considerably darker than the previous, which I liked. Now, as for the audio, I think the music is really good, as well as the voiceover work. I think that was all very well done. Admittedly, the voiceover work and the subtitles were really horribly synced in the opening cutscene. They were way the fuck off. Like, to the point where it was actually kind of distracting. But as for the sound effects, I think they were very well done. I really liked the sound effects in this game. They definitely fit, and they honestly made the game a little spookier. I definitely didn't feel like Diablo 3 was spooky, but this had like some spooky vibes. It wasn't necessarily like a scary game, but it had some spooky vibes. Let's get into the gameplay mechanics and whatnot. Diablo 4 is, you know, Diablo, so it's a loot-based hack and slash RPG. But Diablo 4 does a lot of things different than Diablo 3, and in some ways actually returns to some Diablo 2 elements just way cleaner. The way it plays feels very much like Diablo 3 on the console, so if you've played it on the console, it will feel very similar. But the leveling is very different than that in Diablo 3. There's also all sorts of challenges and your codex for upgrading things. That's a whole new thing. When it comes to managing your inventory, you have some of the awesome elements from Diablo 3, but then you also have some of the limitations from Diablo 2. And the way that it's laid out is very Diablo 2. And I know I'm making these comparisons comparisons, but it's the best way to visualize it. I was playing as a sorcerer, and I was just slightly disappointed that one of my favorite magic spells from the previous game wasn't there. I always loved the, uh, what is it? Wasn't there, but they did have some awesome spells. I built myself a lightning mage sorcerer, whatever you want to call it, and I actually really enjoyed playing as that. I picked that because my go-to is normally the necromancer, and I couldn't be one. But I am excited for the main game where I will be able to play as one. But you do the basic thing. You get your quests. You get your side quests. You go and complete them. And it's actually really interesting. They have some good story attached to a lot of these quests. And you get to sit and listen to it. But because this is an open and persistent world, there are events that other people can jump in on. And I jumped in on some other people's to help them out. And everybody gets their own loot. And if you're like a level 15 doing it and the other guy's a level 18, the enemies are level 15. So it balances and it scales to you. And it's not as invasive as I I thought it would be there is no pausing you can't actually pause which that is annoying and I don't like but I was worried that you were going to be constantly competing with other people and I didn't run into that there might be an element of that later when it's fully launched and you know it's a much bigger experience and there's more people playing but right now I didn't feel like that was too big of a problem as for the controls, I love the controls. They work excellently, just like they did in Diablo 3. When they brought that to console, they really worked to make sure the controls worked, and that is very true in Diablo 4. Now, last but not least, let's get into the graphics and visuals, and it's a beautiful game. The cinematics are stunning, but Blizzard has always been known for that, or at least as long as I've been gaming, you watch those cinematics, and they've always just been so mind-blowing, and that's true here as well. But it goes even further than that because there's actually proper cutscenes where it's your character in gameplay graphics. That's not all just done in the paper way that it was done in like Diablo 3. It's actually a cutscene and I liked that. And then that will feed into the gameplay. It'll like change the camera angle and go to the gameplay. Also, they have the Nightmare Bear from fucking Annihilation in this game for some reason. But I was happy with the effects, I was happy with the creature design. Once again, I think they started leaning more horror and more spooky with this than the previous one. There's something slightly more grotesque about not all of the enemies, but several of the enemies, and the way they die is even more grotesque, and it just all leans towards that horror element that wasn't really present in the previous game. And then, I guess if I have to bitch about anything major, I did have a couple instances of slowdown where my frame rate dropped below what I would like it to be, but it wasn't frequent, and like I said, it was only a couple of times, and it lasted for a few seconds. So to wrap this up, obviously I can't do a full, like, review because it wasn't the full game, but I can say that what I played, I liked, and I'm definitely curious to see more. I want to see more of where the story goes. Okay, so in the comments down below, why don't you tell me what's the first Diablo you played and what platform did you play it on? Mine was Diablo 1 on the PS1, but I didn't get into it for real until Diablo 2 on PC. 
And as always, thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the video, please hit that like button. And if you like what I'm doing in general, share and subscribe. Have a good one.